Yo, what is up guys, Ghost here. Welcome back to another video. Today, I want to go over all of my settings that I currently use for Battlefield 2042. It's been quite a while since I've made one of these videos. There are lots of new settings that have been added to the game little by little, patch by patch. And I've seen, like, so many comments from you guys asking, you know, Ghost, what are your infantry settings? What are your vehicle settings? What are your display settings, etc. So we're going to go and cover all of that in this video for any newer players out there or just simply if you're interested to see what I use. As always guys, if you do find it useful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future Battlefield videos. We are coming up on 49,000. Also join the Discord, feel free to follow me on X if you fancy a chat and you can find me streaming on Twitch three times a week at Ghost Gaming GG. As always guys, thank you very much for the support, really appreciate it. Okay, so let's just head straight into options here. I will be splitting these up section by section, so if you're just interested in, for example, the display options, you can go ahead and, and skip to any part of the video that you prefer. So starting off in the general options here, the two main ones are to have control hints and reactive hints off. I prefer to have as little screen clutter as possible, and unless you're a completely new player and you need these hints, I really recommend turning them off. The rest of these things here are really up to you. I would say persistent servers, if you are a premium subscriber to like the battle pass i think then you can create the persistent servers in the game make sure you turn this on if you want your server to remain in portal once you've hosted one i just want to touch quickly here on some of the network options because i think a lot of players don't know about these so there are some really nice tools in here first of all you can show the damage log and the event graph and what this will actually tell you is the white blocks will be how many bullets you fired the green will be the bullet hit registered on the client, that means on your computer or your console, and then the red will be when the bullet is registered on the server. So sometimes this can be helpful if you feel like you should have killed somebody in a one versus one and they just out damage you and it feels like you get one shot. You can actually see the bullet hits in real time here on the event graph, how many bullets you fired and how many of them registered on the server. And this is completely customizable. Move it around, do whatever you want with it. Obviously it's personal preference, but yeah, just thought I'd mention that one. Okay, moving on to video settings. So I use borderless, but honestly, I recommend using full screen mode unless you're i don't know like me and you have to tab between a lot of different stuff all of the time field of view i use 89 this corresponds to 120 in horizontal field of view battlefield always uses vertical field of view which is you know very uncommon these days so just bear that in mind it's just nice because a lot of games have a max horizontal field of view of 120 so that's why i go for 89 and not 90 vehicle third person field of view crank that all the way up so you can see as much as possible ADS field of view, you definitely want to have on. I believe this is now default as on. This will basically tie your field of view to when you ADS and will help better with your aiming. Brightness, I have this set to 50. You can always turn this up a little bit if you have difficulties seeing players in dark corners. Motion blur, chromatic aberration, and vignette. You want all of these turned to off just so you can reduce the visual clutter a little bit. And these are the graphic settings that I run with. Feel free if you want to... Take a screenshot of these, copy them down, whatever you want to do. I find that this gives a nice blend of decent graphics and also great performance. Of course, if you are mainly interested in getting performance, just turn everything to the lowest setting. The game will still look fine and it's going to give you that nice performance. Honestly, the only reason I have some of these turned up a little bit is because I make videos on YouTube and I stream the game and I don't want it to look, you know, the absolute worst it can be. One setting that is about gameplay, though, is the undergrowth quality. I specifically turn that down to low, not for performance reasons, but so that there is less grass hiding enemy soldiers. You know, if somebody's prone on the ground, for example, you're going to be able to see them a little bit better. Dynamic resolution scale, you want that off. DLSS, you can play around with this if you want. I've never really found it to benefit me particularly. I use a 3080 Ti graphics card. And for me, I just always leave this off, but for sure, if you're using a much older card, it might benefit you to use some of the performance settings here. Although in past tests, it has made the game look pretty, pretty damn terrible. Ray tracing off, obviously. Uh, reflex low latency, enabled plus boost. I have heard some people say it's better to have enabled, but I run it on enabled plus boost. Latency flash indicator, future frame rendering, and vertical sync I have as off. Now moving into the HUD general settings, one of them you want to check here is the camera shake amount. Turn that down to the lowest possible so you get less of that going on. Colorblind settings, a lot of people like to mess around with these. Personally, I don't. Um, I think a lot of people who do mess with them aren't colorblind themselves. They just prefer to change the colors of the enemies or their squad mates or whatever. So if you want to do that, go nuts. Show kills made by all. This will show every single kill 
in the kill log instead of just like the soldiers around you i believe as default it's set to squad and nearby something like that so definitely want to put this to all so that you can get a bit of read on the battlefield overall now damage numbers this one is actually quite important a lot of people think this middle option here just shows the number at the bottom of the screen and this option shows the number in the middle of your screen but these actually differ in the way that they tally up the damage so this is going to log the total amount of damage that you've done to a soldier a vehicle or what have you if you have this one selected and this especially pertains to if you're playing in a vehicle you won't properly be able to tell how much percentage of damage you've done to that vehicle so even though i prefer having it closer to the middle of the screen for that reason I leave it on the score log here. Coming down to the chat here, a lot of these are important to pay attention to if you're a new player. I like to set it as when active, so whenever somebody speaks, the chat will activate. And then you want to enable all chat. This will be disabled as default, and that means you won't be able to chat to the enemy team, nor will you be able to see anybody else's chat who's actually using all chat. So make sure that you turn this on, unless you're super sensitive to, I don't know, people on the enemy team are calling you a noob or something. The rest of this is pretty much personal preference. You can go and make the chat box bigger if you like. I keep it as small as possible because I like to see as much as possible. HUD scaling, I'm not gonna go through every single option here, but this is what I use for my HUD. And as you can see by the example on the right hand side of the screen, the HUD is pretty customizable. So you can move things around, you can resize them, etc. So feel free to tweak and change these. Crosshair settings, again, if you're somebody who likes to mess around with this, feel free to do so. Personally, I keep things pretty much default, although you do want to make sure that you have crosshair projection set to off. Again, here for the hit indicators, this is all personal preference. I don't mess around with mine, but if you want to set up some special color scheme, you can do that here as well. Now, the minimap section, this is a very big section. So again, here, I'm not going to go through every single one, but I am going to highlight some of the most important things. So first of all, I like to increase the view distance for on foot, ground vehicles and air vehicles to the maximum. And then I just keep my minimap set to the automatic setting. So that way, whenever I get into a jet or a helicopter, my minimap is going to zoom out all the way up to 600 meters. And if I'm playing on foot, it's going to be at 75 meters. So if you set it up this way, make sure this one here is on auto. You shouldn't have to mess about with it as you're playing at all. As for the opacity and everything, I just keep that at maximum. I don't really see why you would want to see like half of your minimap. Like it's there's nothing really that important down there in that bottom left corner most of the time. But you know, if you want to turn some of these down, feel free to do that. Now, moving on to HUD icons. This is going to be one of the larger sections and arguably one of the ones that is going to take you the longest time to figure out. So I'm not going to go over every single setting here in detail, but I am going to go through a little bit of my thought process of how I like to set things up. So let's skip over this section for a second and then we'll come back to it. First of all, you get a section for each kind of indicator on the HUD. So you've got objective icons, things that I deem to be least important really, I'm gonna turn down a little bit. So I turn the size down from 100% to 75 because objective icons, you know, you know where the objectives are. They don't really need to be that huge on your screen. Moving on to friendly icons here. I have these at 100, but I put like, for example, the revive icons down to 50% size. Same thing with my squad settings here. And then for the enemy icons, I bump these all the way up to 150% size because those are really the icons that are the most important. When you spot an enemy, you really want to take notice of that and have that be front and center. Again, neutral icons here, 75% and the same for the ping markers. And of course, you can go crazy, you know, messing about with the opacity and the zoomed opacity. So that means when you're ADSing with your weapon, this will be the opacity you're going to see here. But before you do that, I would actually come up to this section at the top here, which is relatively new. So this section is all about your aim based icons opacity and you can set sort of a blanket setting if you will for all of the below settings. So before you go messing about with the opacity for individual icons, I would recommend coming into this section first. So this I would say is the most important one. This is the overall opacity for all of your icons in the center of your screen. So basically what the game is gonna do is fade out icons in the center of your screen where you're aiming and then have them be more prominent around the edge of the screen. So I set this to 50% opacity. I actually don't like to get rid of any icons entirely. So that's why I have um, the icons opacity peripheral zone size here when I'm zoomed up at 100%. You know, I would recommend just trying around with these settings to see what each and every one of them does. But one of the hurdles I ran into is that I would have, for example, 
the icons for my teammates down at a very low opacity and sometimes what would happen is a teammate would jump in front of me while I was ADSing and I would automatically assume that it was an enemy and end up shooting them. And of course that is one of the bad things about Battlefield 2042. You can have the exact same looking specialist and it could be a teammate or it could be an enemy and yes it has different coloured lights and stuff like that but sometimes when you're in the thick of it and you're in the moment you know and the McKay jumps in front of you you just kind of react to it. So I definitely recommend having you know all of your icons as visible as possible while still not too over the top and in your way whilst you're ADSing. And honestly I would say rather than messing about too much with the opacity so you can't see them at all, I would just turn down the scale of them like I've done here a little bit. Of course this all comes totally down to personal preference, it also depends on lots of other things like the size of your monitor and all of that business. So you know I'm playing on a 32 inch monitor so I can see things pretty well even though they are set small but if you're playing on like a 24 inch monitor then you might want to have them a little bit bigger than I do here so again just do whatever feels right for you. Moving over to the sound section, I like to turn the music in the game off. I just find it distracting at the end of a round when that music comes in. It just allows me to hear Soldier Footsteps that little bit better. In-game announcer is on 50%. It is useful to hear sometimes, but it is a little bit loud. 3D headphones is the audio mix of choice for me. That's what gives me the greatest clarity in footsteps and things like that. Now, if you are somebody who enjoys music in the game, they've actually added this option here, which is music package. So instead of having the default music, you can have the music from zero, which was season one, season two, season three, season four, season five, etc. Or you can have it randomized. Of course, since I'm not playing any music, I just leave it on default. But if you do have the music on, that might be something you want to mess around with. Voice chat, I like to leave this enabled. Sometimes you will get somebody in the voice chat, especially can be handy if you just can't be bothered going on Discord and you're playing with some friends. Controller, I'm going to skip over because I play on mouse and keyboard, so sorry, can't really help you out there, but feel free to apply whatever is applicable from mouse and keyboard to your controller if you are a console player. So first of all, here in the global settings, make sure that mouse raw input is, of course, turned on. I like to invert aircraft flight, if you don't like to do that, that's fine. That's completely personal preference. On foot, this is my mouse sensitivity. I play at 1600 DPI and it's usually somewhere between like 1.6 and around two. I actually used to have it a bit higher. I've recently turned it down quite a lot and I'm starting to get used to that. It feels better for me. So do whatever feels comfortable for you. Uniform soldier aiming, I've always had this on and at a coefficient of 133 in every Battlefield game. So I'm super used to this, and I believe that these are now the default settings that DICE will now give you with the game. I don't think it's a bad setting to have on. I think it helps with your muscle memory of aiming. So I know some people prefer not to use it. It's it's really up to you, you know, try using it, try turning it off and see if that feels any better. I just see how you get on. Soldier Sprint, I like to have on hold. Always use traversal sprint, I have us on there because I just really don't see any point not using traversal sprint most of the time. All these zoom settings are pretty standard and default there. Air spawn parachute auto deploy, I would recommend having off as well. If you have this on, it's going to automatically deploy your parachute while you're way up in the air and you typically want to be deploying it much closer to the ground. Auto throw grenades and throwing knives, I have us on so you don't have to equip the throwing knife and the grenade and then click to use it. You can just press G on your keyboard and it will throw it. Request and skip revive is much better as a toggle. I get so tired of holding the E button or holding the space bar to um, skip a revive or request a revive. Much easier just to toggle this on for me. All of these sensitivities, we're just gonna leave the same. We want as consistent sensitivity across the board here. So I don't recommend messing around with those at all. Moving into vehicles, I use 20% vehicle mouse aim sensitivity. As I mentioned before, maximum field of view. Gunner aim sensitivity is at 50 here. Transport vehicle free look sense is 200. I don't really know what this does. I thought it changed the free look sensitivity within the cockpit of jets and stuff like that, but that actually doesn't seem to be the case. So maybe they've changed that. Maybe that does affect it now, but in any case, I put this on the maximum. Vehicle boost, that's like your, you know, afterburners on your jet, for example. Have these on hold instead of toggle. Vehicle weapon zoom, I put as toggle instead of hold. When you're flying in the jet, I generally spend most of my time in the third person zoom cam with the 25 millimeters and having this to toggle just gives your mouse a little bit more control there than having to constantly hold in your right click button. 
So my aircraft sensitivity is 60, helicopter is 75, and that is with an overall sensitivity at 1600 DPI. So this is quite complicated to get correct here. You've got three different factors, right? First of all, you've got your DPI, then you have overall vehicle sensitivity, and then finally you have your specific sensitivity for aircraft, AKA jets, and then for your helicopters. I honestly wish they would expand on this a little bit more and we could have specific sensitivities for like the Nightbird, the Stealth Heli, the Attack Heli, because all of these helicopters handle very differently from one another. Third person aircraft camera roll. I have this as off. If you have this on, your camera is going to roll around whenever you roll your jet and it's quite jarring visually. Some people do prefer to play with this on and I would argue it is actually better for dogfighting to have this on, but I prefer to have it off not only for myself, but also for my viewer's sake. Uniform vehicle aiming, I like to have as on just like with the soldier aiming and I have that at 133 on the coefficient. Decouple tank turret aiming from turning. This one makes it so that you can turn your tank around without your tank turret following. So if you want to, for example, simultaneously drive away from an enemy tank while still aiming at that tank and taking shots at it, this is definitely a setting that you want to have as on. Now into the key bindings. I like to put full map as tab and then I put scoreboard on M. So I'm essentially reversing these two keybinds here. And the reason for that is that, well, I don't really need tab, which is one of the best keybinds in my opinion to be for the scoreboard. I don't need to see the scoreboard when I'm in the thick of it. On the flip side, I do sometimes need to look at the full map and get a good overview of the battlefield, especially if you're playing in a vehicle. But one of the most important keybinds I almost forgot here, if we go to the infantry section and go over to weapons and equipment, I like to put modify weapon attachments as mouse three. You can use T on your keyboard, but this is a much more comfortable keybind. Shout out to Enders for this one. He actually put me onto this and it's been a, a really nice find there because you can actually use this in conjunction with the one to four keys on your keyboard to change attachments incredibly fast. Obviously, if you're using T, it's rather awkward to use your index finger to press T and then like your pinky to press one or two. That doesn't really work. So I really recommend getting used to putting it somewhere on your mouse if you have the buttons for it. Vehicle driver settings. This is basically for your tanks, your Latvies, any ground vehicle. Again, I make sure to change the full map of the scoreboard, but apart from that, things are pretty much standard. Same thing here goes for the transport driver. However, when we get over to the pilot setting, so this is for the jets, I also go ahead and change exit vehicle to B. And the reason for that is as default, this will be E, and it's quite easy to fat finger your E button and embarrassingly bail out in the middle of a dogfight or something like that. So I just change that to B, that way I'm never gonna press it by accident. Over to the movement settings, Pitch down and pitch up, I actually have to reverse here. So what I like to do is put space bar to pitch up and left alt to pitch down. However, because I have my settings inverted, I have to swap these two. It's kind of weird how that works, but if you don't use inverted flight, you are gonna have pitch down on left alt and pitch up on space bar. And this will allow you to move your jet around much easier without constantly swiping your mouse across your pad all the time. You also want to come here into weapons and equipment and fire will be set as space bar as well as mouse one. You want to remove this from space bar so that whenever you pitch up, you're not firing your weapon as well. Moving over to helicopter settings here. Again, exit vehicle is going to be B. You're going to rebind full map and scoreboard to tab and M. Moving into movement settings here, things are pretty similar. So what I do is I have pitch down. And remember, because I'm inverted here, pitch down is essentially pitch up. So that's going to be space. And then pitch down is going to be left control. I know it's really confusing. I don't know why they make it like this in the game that you have to like reverse these if you've got your uh, your look inverted, but that's just the way that they've designed it. Again, if you're playing without inverted look, then you are going to have pitch down as left control and then the pitch up setting here as space bar. And again, weapons and equipment, you wanna remove fire from your space bar. And last but not least here in the menu options, you also wanna make sure that you put push to talk if you use the voice chat that is to some nice keybind I like to use mouse for because I do have a couple of mouse buttons there, but I'm sure you already have a keybinding for that maybe on your keyboard, on your mouse, so just use whatever you feel is best for you. 
And that is pretty much everything that I change in Battlefield 2042, guys. I know there are a lot of settings to get through there. So if there's something you want to come back to and check out and you only need this for like a specific thing like key bindings or your display settings or whatever, feel free to, you know, bookmark the video, come back to it and use the timestamps down below to find the correct part of the video. In any case, I hope this helped somebody out, whether you're a new player or a seasoned player. Also, guys, feel free to comment down below. Let me know if there's anything that you see that I didn't do that you're doing that's a good idea because I'm always up for picking up new tips and tricks of my own. But otherwise, thank you guys for watching so much today. Have a good one and I'll see you in the next video.